The lowest classification in the CEAP clinical classification of varicose veins and venous disorders is C1. C1 is telangiectasia in medical terms, which normal people call thread veins, spider veins, or sometimes broken veins. We should never really use the term broken veins because broken veins don't exist. If you break a vein, it bleeds, you get a hematoma, and that would be a bruise. So really, although thread veins and spider veins are acceptable, medically we should call these C1, these little veins, we should call them telangiectasia. Research from Scotland several years ago showed that 88% of adult females and 79% of adult males actually have telangiectasia on their legs. So it's actually normal to have telangiectasia or thread veins, although most people of course don't want them and many strive to get rid of them. Telangiectasia, thread veins or spider veins of the legs are actually associated with other veins feeding blood into them in 89% of people. So C1 telangiectasia, or thread veins, spider veins, whatever you want to call them, of the legs, only exist by themselves in 11% of people. Research has shown that in these other 89% of people, there are underlying varicose veins feeding blood into them, and really these need to be treated first if we're going to have any chance of getting the thread veins on the surface to be treated properly. Research has also shown that of that 89% of people with thread veins who have underlying feeding veins, 40% of them have major hidden varicose veins underneath, and 15% of them have little veins called perforating veins that need treatment. So therefore, anyone who thinks they've just got thread veins or telangiectasia of the legs really must have a duplex ultrasound scan to find the underlying feeding veins first, and they need to be treated to get successful treatment of the telangiectasia thread veins or spider veins of the legs.